Hi, my name is Chris and I'm a software engineer here at Rancher. In this video, I will be demonstrating Submariner, a tool we've built to help facilitate network connectivity between Kubernetes clusters. That's quite a mouthful, so let's break down exactly what we're doing. In this example, I have two Kubernetes clusters and the overlay networks on these clusters are isolated from each other. This means that pods in cluster one cannot directly communicate with pods in cluster two. In today's Kubernetes ecosystem, with most out-of-box clusters, the way to get traffic from cluster 1's pods to cluster 2's pods is to use Kubernetes constructs such as services of type node port and load bouncer or ingresses. However, this is not very useful for most cross-cluster communication because most applications are not built to communicate using these constructs. In order to solve this problem, Submariner uses hosts in both clusters that are delegated to establishing IPsec tunnels to connect the overlay networks between clusters. In this example, we can see that we have two gateway nodes in each cluster connected using these white lines which represent the IPsec tunnels. In order to exchange metadata information between clusters, there is a broker, which in itself is actually a Kubernetes cluster. Now, instead of talking around slides, I think it's a little more illustrative to show an actual demonstration of two clusters connected using Submariner. These clusters were provisioned with different pod and service ciders represented by this diagram. We can see that West has 10.0 and 10.1, and East has 10.98 and 10.99. We can also see that the DNS suffixes for both of the clusters are respective, where West has west.local and East has east.local. In this interface, we can see we have four clusters total. Three of these are going to be our clusters we're going to use in this demonstration. We can see that we have two clusters, West and East and a third cluster called Broker, which is going to be where we exchange our information between West and East so that the IPsec tunnels can be established. Before we get started, I'm going to go into the West and East clusters and label a node so that Submariner is designated to run on it. And I'll do the same thing in the East cluster. I'm going to go ahead and generate a pre-shared key so that the IPsec tunnels can be established. Using the Kubernetes CLI, I will switch to the context of the broker cluster and Helm install the broker components. We can see the output of this Helm chart is giving us the same commands that our documentation does, but I'm going to actually go ahead and use the documentation, which uses environment variable substitution to set the namespace. I'm now going to switch to the West cluster context and install Submariner using the Helm install command, which has the cluster specific information substituted in, namely the cluster ID, cluster CIDR, and service CIDR. Now I'll switch to the East cluster context and perform the same action with the information for the East cluster substituted in, just like it did for the West cluster. Now that we've installed both a Submariner broker and Submariner into these clusters, we can go ahead and perform a small demonstration of WordPress deployed in one cluster using MariaDB in another. We'll go into the West cluster and install MariaDB using the Rancher Catalog interface. Note that using the Rancher Catalog interface, or even Rancher in general, is not necessary to make Submariner work, but for convenience purposes, this is what I'm using. I'm going to go ahead and disable MariaDB replication for purposes of simplicity. I'm also going to set the MariaDB service type to cluster IP so that we can directly reference the cluster IP from the remote cluster. Now we can see that MariaDB will be deployed into this cluster. 
I'm going to go ahead and retrieve the cluster IP for the MariaDB service so that we can go into the other cluster and deploy WordPress. We can see that the cluster IP here is 10.1.45.131, which corresponds with the service cider that is on the West cluster. We'll go over back here into the, def the default project of the East cluster and deploy WordPress. If I go down here and scroll down, we'll see that we have WordPress available. Instead of installing MariaDB with this chart, I'm going to go ahead and disable this so that we can specify our external database host, which in this case is our 10.1.45.131. I'll set the default uh, admin pa uh, username and password and set the external database for MariaDB so that when we deploy this, it will uh, use that remote MariaDB. We can go back to our West clusters MariaDB and look inside of the MariaDB deployment to see that it is running in fact on West nodes and has a West IP address. In East, if we go to our catalogs app and watch the progress of this WordPress deployment, we can see that the pod will come up and if we look at the logs of the pod, it just has to go through the process of initializing PHP and MySQL and actually initializing the database. We can see that we were able to have our WordPress connect to the remote MySQL server. And now we actually have WordPress running inside of this East cluster. If I access the WordPress that we just deployed in our East cluster, we can see that we now have a functional WordPress blog. And this is actually using the MySQL that is inside of our West cluster, which is a completely independent Kubernetes cluster, other than the fact that Submariner is now connecting the cluster networks. While the WordPress example is quite simple and not actually useful in practice, it's helpful to note that Submariner is actually really designed to help enable things like multi-cluster service discovery or multi-cluster service meshes, as well as doing things like deploying Cassandra across many Kubernetes clusters. Thank you for watching my demo video of Submariner. If you have any questions, please check out the Submariner website at submariner.io or check out the GitHub repository at ranter slash submariner.